Hello everyone! Today I'm filming my second video about ASP8266 module and here we'll be talking about how can you establish TCP connection and also how it is possible to transfer and receive some sample data. Besides that, we also will cover some topics such as communication over HTTP and HTTPS protocols and some examples how to build a HTTP REST API client with JSON parsing logic. Here we are back in our Eclipse workspace, where I have created a LED control application in my previous video. As you can see, we still have LED control commands here. If you haven't seen my previous video how to set up Eclipse environment, then please refer video link under description. At this point we can append new folder called Utils, and here we'll create some useful mods which could help us to deal with HTTP transfers and different minimum values tracing. In order to have this folder to be included as a separate module in our output assembly, we have to create a new make file. So at the beginning of this file at genlibs variable we have to define output library name, which is libutils.a in our case. And special if and dev directive is used here to do not override this value in case of we are traversing from another child submodule. Includes variable will allow us to make sure that all necessary header files will be included from parents folder. As the next instruction we have to set location of parent directory itself. And lastly, make source include of projects base make file. And user module make file has been updated the similar way. Main projects make file on other side will need to have subdirs variable to be updated. Here we have to specify path to our new utils module directory. The similar way component section needs to be updated to include output library archive name, so our ESP linker could create the relevant file on output. And the last section which needs to be updated is the linker instructions. Here we have to include additional parameter to link with the SSL module as will support the HTTPS connections as well. And lastly, JSON module needs to be included as we'll use SDK tools to parse HTTP REST JSON responses. At this point, our new utils module is ready and we can start to append source and header files here. Firstly, let me place mod enum C file. In my case, I will copy paste it from existing templates. You also can get these templates from my GitHub page or my website. Please refer links in the video description. As you can see, this module is responsible to convert various integer enum values into readable strings. This might help you to make better logging for your applications. Also, it makes testing and debugging a bit easier for you. Now, let me append the relevant header file, so this module can be included in our application. At the next step, I would like to create HTTP utils module. This will contain some useful methods in order to interact with remote HTTP service. You can see some standard header values defined. It will be used for HTTP response parsing. Now let me create the HTTP module source file. As I already have mentioned before, you can get all of these code samples from my website, either from my GitHub repository. All links are available from the video description below. Here you can see our new module source file. And firstly, I would like to highlight and describe parse URL method. Typical URL format can consist of multiple sections. As the first prefix, you can find protocol type definition. In our case, it can be HTTP, either secure HTTPS. At the next section, we can see hostname definition. This is an actual address where request will be sent to. And this hostname will be converted into actual IP address before request data will be transmitted there. The last section represents a HTTP path value, which will be passed as a part of HTTP GET query. 
So these three sections can be extracted separately using our parse URL method. Its return value will indicate which protocol type was defined. And hostname with the HTTP path will be populated into input string buffers, which are passed by arguments. At the next position you can see parse HTTP headers method. Input argument of this method will include the entire HTTP response content. So the logic here will be responsible to extract complete HTTP headers section. Parse HTTP header method sounds similar, but it will be responsible to pick up a single value. So, based on input content, this method will just pick up single header section, and it will extract specific value bound to this header. Is end of content method is responsible to provide a boolean flag, indicating whether the response body is full and completed. And the last method have a similar logic here, which is responsible to parse HTTP body under different conditions. There are two main options how the response body can be composed. In one case you will have content length header defined, while in another case you will encounter specific transfer encoding header with value set to chunked. In case of content length, the header integer value will indicate corresponding body size, which will be presented as a single block, while in case of chunk transfer encoding, we will have multiple integer values which will be bound to corresponding block sizes. So HTTP content here will be split into several sections, which will need to be unified before processing. So this way our parse HTTP body method will handle these complex scenarios and will return clean HTTP content to client. And lastly, at this point I can copy paste user's final application here. At the beginning of this sample you have to update some macro definitions. You can notice URL parameter here. This target will be executed by our application. If you'll try to open this URL in the web browser, we'll see some sample output JSON message. So the goal of our ESP application will be to extract specific JSON tag value from received HTTP response. This informational weather REST web service uses special client API key and most probably by that time when this video will be released, this key will be expired already. So you have to update it accordingly if you would like to use this sample. At the next point we have to update Wi-Fi session ID. This basically will indicate which access point we'll need to connect to. And Wi-Fi passphrase should match the password which will be set for your internet Wi-Fi session. Then we have to specify JSON tag name which we would like to extract from REST API HTTP response. And as the last parameter we have to indicate what will be the nested level number for target JSON tag. You have to notice here that level number counting will start from zero. So here you can see typical JSON sample which we'll try to parse. This particular JSON message represent current weather conditions under specific region. This way will be interesting to extract temperature value which is presented as decimal number. And here you also can refer how JSON tag level numbers are defined. Main user init method is also modified here. As you can see now we use station mode for our USB device. And as you can see our commons processing method is also updated. We have completely new set of commands here. So the first command will allow you to scan the full list of available Wi-Fi networks, which will be printed to USB UR port output. And this command can be triggered by clicking S button. The next command should be used to connect to a specified Wi-Fi session, which we have defined using C macros in the beginning. Disconnect command will just close ESP current Wi-Fi connection. And the information command will just print the existing Wi-Fi connection state. Then using T character you can trigger HTTP transfer command, 
This basically will send a HTTP GET request to target URL, which we have defined before. And the output HTTP response body will also be processed and persisted in internal buffer. The last command can be triggered by P character. This will just execute JSON parsing logic against the HTTP response body received on the previous step. Now I would like to compile everything and demonstrate how does it works. Here I am back in my Linux Debian terminal and again I would like to use Minicom to communicate with my ASP device. So first of all I would like to execute scan command. And here we can see full list of available Wi-Fi networks. One of them is MIDB, which I will try to connect to. By clicking I character on the keyboard, you can print current status of Wi-Fi connection. So here we have idle state, which means that we are not connected anywhere yet. And now let's trigger connect command by clicking C character. As you can see here, we have dynamic IP address assigned to our ESP module. And Internet Gateway address also has been set. Now if we'll check connection status again, we'll see that it has been updated to GOT IP, which means that we are connected now. At this point we are ready to trigger HTTP request command by clicking T button. You can see here a lot of useful information printed as UART output. This way we can see how the hostname is resolved to IP address, what is the HTTP GET request body, and the actual HTTP response content. One part of this content will consist of HTTP headers, while another one is the HTTP body itself. From this body will be interesting to extract current temperature value. The last command supported here will trigger HTTP body JSON parsing logic. As you can see the actual JSON body is extracted here from HTTP response. And following step will just extract actual temperature value which we are interested in. This covers pretty much all comments in our demo application. So let's switch back to our source code for more detailed review. Now we can take a look to actual Wi-Fi session scan command. As you can see here we are triggering scan command and registering callback method. So this method will be triggered once scan command will be fully completed. This callback handler itself has an internal while cycle which will traverse through all extracted Wi-Fi session details. For each of them it will print additional information such as frequency of set, cipher, session name and channel number. The next comment which I would like to present will trigger actual Wi-Fi connection. Here you can find relevant SDK comment invocation. Connection configured at the same time will make sure that predefined Wi-Fi session ID and pass trace will be established correctly. In the similar way we will have Wi-Fi disconnect command. And now before we'll jump into HTTP request submission command, I would like to briefly remind you how the concept of callbacks is working in ESP. You can see here a sample Blink application which we have reviewed in the previous video. And this is corresponding sequence diagram which represents our Blinky example. So at the first stage we are registering callback method by special function. In our case it is timer registration method. And the callback itself is passed as input argument to registration method. This way callback can be invoked at the later stage. In our case it will be triggered by timer each 500 milliseconds. So on the left side you can refer corresponding presentation of this workflow which is described as a sequence diagram. So here we have method to trigger HTTP request submission, where the main function is to resolve IP address by hostname. And here you will see the relevant representation using sequence diagram. This way we are just registering callback and triggering function to get IP address by hostname. Now let me show you the first callback handler which will be triggered once IP address will be resolved. Here we have to prepare our ESP connection config. 
So as you can see here, we set the connection port number based on protocol type, which can be either HTTP, either HTTPS in our case. And the similar way we have to use either ESP Secure Connect, either just ESP Connect based on predefined protocol type in our URL. Besides that, we also have to register two callbacks here. One of them will be responsible to handle event of successful connection, while another one will be responsible to handle connection error cases. And this is the way how will it looks like on our sequence diagram. Now we can traverse inside successful connection callback handler. And here you can notice send comment is used, which also can be distinguished between secure send and non-secure options. Also, here you will find standard HTTP GET request composition logic, which will use HTTP path and HTTP hostname defined previously. And lastly, three callback handlers need to be registered here. Disconnect callback will be triggered in case of TCP socket closure, while data reception callback handler needs to process and persist input data chunks and it will be triggered several times, one time per each data chunk. The last callback, which is TCP send data, is optional here, but it also can be used if you would like to track what exactly has been transmitted. Here we are placing this callback's representation to our schema. This will help us to handle data transfer, data reception and disconnect events properly. Now let's go inside TCP receive callback handler. As you can see here, for each data chunk, we'll trigger special check in order to understand whether full HTTP body is received or not. And in case of TCP socket closure, we have to make sure to release all resources associated with specific ESP connection. The relevant logic is implemented in release ESP con memory method. Now let's finalize our sequence diagram. Here we'll have a couple additional samples indicating how receive and transmit callbacks can be triggered. And the last comment which we would like to review here is responsible to parse received HTTP JSON message. As you can see, special JSON parse methods are used here, which are supplied from standard SDK. JSON parse setup is responsible here to initialize parser against specific JSON message. Also, you can notice here that we use while cycle to traverse over each JSON tag. Within this cycle, we are checking each tag against specific name and tag depth level. Then we validate corresponding value type. In case of it is decimal, we are persisting this value. And finally, if we have found corresponding result, then we are just printing it to your output. This concludes our sample application view. So you can use this approach with any HTTP service and extract any output data from response JSON, like we have done it here with current temperature value on the street. Just in case of you are not familiar with GitHub, I will show you how to get these source code samples from Git repository. So on the new folder, you just have to execute the relevant git clone command. This way all source files can be downloaded. Under ESP mods folder you can find all samples which we have reviewed before. The alternative way is just open my GitHub project or my website in your web browser and just copy paste everything what you need. This concludes our today's video about HTTP communication over ESP. In the next video I plan to demonstrate how ESP works without Vmos development board. This is cheaper solution for your projects, but it will require some additional hardware setup. Thanks for watching my video. See you next time. Bye.